hey guys, it's me, Sean Astrum. Today, I'm going to show you guys how Corona Renderer now fully supports Cinema 4D's native material stacking feature, and that is freaking awesome. Let's check it out. Okay guys, so here we are inside of Cinema 4D. I have set up Corona Renderer here. Uh, I lowered the resolution to 896 by 504. And I'm gonna bring in a nice plane object. I'm gonna scale this down to 500 by 500. Let's enable Gerard shading so we can see the geometry here. Not that big a deal, but sometimes I like to just really make sure I can see the topology on the geometry I'm working with. But I wanted to show you guys how Corona now fully supports Cinema's native material stacking feature. And this is really cool in that you can uh, actually utilize multiple UV mapping um, on different materials and you can stack them up utilizing the opacity blending built into the material here. So first thing I'm going to do is create a material here. I'm going to call this grass. And that is because I'm going to load up a little uh, grass file here. Uh, let's see here. It's just the grass texture. And this is just a tileable texture. And you can see right away that we are getting it mapped to this plane via the built-in mapping uh, UV coordinates that you get with the plane object and let me just show you if I make this editable I made a copy of that and then if I shift double click this UV we can see UV tag rather we can see the built-in UV mapping for this object which is pretty handy so but we don't need to make that editable in this case and what I wanted to show you guys is if we select this grass material I can go over here to uh, the projection tab and I can change the projection of this so we can set it to spherical, cylindrical, flat, and cubic, which is something we might want to do in this particular case in order to show uh, this tileable texture. Uh, so one way that we can adjust the scale of this is by adjusting the length in the U and V direction here. So if we wanted denser grass, we would actually lower this to something like 50-50. So that's all well and good, and that's cool. And with the material stacking, what we can do is, well, I had a friend of mine ask me, how would I fade out the edges of, of a texture like this that is mapped you know, with cubic projection such as this. So let me just show you guys. So if I hop in here to the opacity and let's say I wanted to use Cinema's wonderful built-in gradient tool to hide this grass texture around the edges, I could go to the cylindrical mode here and I could set up sort of a fall off here. But you can see the problem that we're having is since we set the grass to this cubic mode, it's also going to apply uh, our, you know, opacity texture in that same cubic projection. So if I actually create a new material, I can call this opacity, if I could spell, uh, map. Now, if we hop into here and disable diffuse, actually, and enable opacity, let's go over to our grass material, and I'm going to copy out this gradient shader, and I'm going to paste it into the um, opacity map here. You can see kind of what we're getting. And what we also want to enable is refraction. If I set refraction to 1, then you can see we have a completely uh, transparent material. So if I stack this on top of our plane object here and we enable the IPR and let's just quickly bring in a sun and sky and a camera and lower the exposure on the camera to 
five and a half. And let's refresh that. You'll see what we're getting now. So I'm going to check my grass material and I'm gonna uncheck that opacity there. And you can see now what we're getting and we're kind of getting the opposite effect. So I need to reverse these colors here to show you guys how we can utilize the material stacking feature. So we have this opacity map stacked on top of the grass texture and the grass texture is set to cubic and the opacity map is set to UV mapping and we're utilizing that built-in UV that comes with the plane object. So that is just one example of how we can utilize the material stacking feature inside of Corona. Now, if I bring in a sphere and I put this on the grass here, I'm going to show you guys another quick way in which we can utilize the material stacking. So we have this material here. We'll just call this, um, we'll make this blue and I will do a little bit of reflection on there and that's all well and good. And let's say we wanted to apply a white logo. So if I go here and make a white material and then inside of my opacity channel, I'm going to load up this Superman logo that I pulled off the web. And let's invert these colors. We should be able to do that by inverting them there. And that's cool. And now if I just throw this onto the sphere, you'll see what we're getting. And we are getting this Superman logo and it is being wrapped around the sphere. And again, this is set to UV mapping. Now something you may want to do and you can do is you could bring in a camera and we could select this guy and set the mapping to camera mapping. Now I can throw this camera in here and I can look through it. And I think this might be a slight bug, but if I position the camera here like so, we'll call this mapping camera. And I have found that with the IPR or the IR rather, we are not actually getting this camera mapping feature. Uh, it doesn't seem to be working correctly, but that's okay if I just go ahead and hit Shift R and do a little render here. Um, I'm gonna go to the post process here and dock that over there and let's do the same thing here. Let's just underexpose this by a few stops. And now you can see that that, that camera mapping is in fact working. I'm gonna stop that. And I think I can actually utilize the magic preview here. Um, and this is a little plugin that you can get um, from Nitro 4D, I believe it is. And so now we can see you know, better what's going on until they get that bug fixed. But if I go to my mapping camera here, and if I just zoom out, um, or zoom in rather, uh, we can get better mapping going on with this Superman logo. And this is just another way of sort of utilizing the multiple mapping feature. Now, if we select this guy here and uncheck tile, uh, you'll see that we are just getting that mapped right on there. And it looks like it's projecting all the way through. And I think if we set this to front only, um, not quite sure. Oh, there we go. Nope, that's back only. And that's just, referring to the UVs. I did a little bit of quick investigating and I determined that this is in fact a little bug right now, but normally if you set the side projection with camera mapping mode to front, we would not have that issue where the uh, projected logo or texture or whatever it may be is going on the back side of the object. Uh, so just don't worry about that for now. When the final version of Corona is out, I'm sure they will have that all worked out. Now, I also threw in a HDRI file, so this was a little bit more interesting to look at. And this is actually a sneak peek of an HDRI kit I have coming out. Um, it's an epic sunset pack. And so I've been uh, working on that a lot lately. But you can kind of see the lighting that we're getting. Uh, is looking pretty cool if 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 I don't say so myself. Uh, but anyway, guys, yeah, I just really wanted to show you guys the material stacking functionality 
And real quick, if we were to create one more little uh, material here, and if I enabled displacement uh, on this guy and threw in a uh, Cinema 4D built-in noise shader, let's set this to something, I don't know, this electric is always kind of cool. Now, if I throw this onto my sphere object, which already has two materials, you'll notice that we get nothing, and that's because this needs to be the first material in the list of materials and then we will get displacement coming through and we can stack right on top of that uh, so pretty cool stuff guys and again um, the fact that you know the corona team is doing everything they can to support all of cinema's native features is so awesome uh, and yeah I'm super excited for corona obviously and uh yeah, guys, uh, thanks for checking this out, and we will see you again soon. Oh, and make sure you guys are liking and subscribing and all that jazz. That will kind of help me stay motivated to continue to crank out these videos. Talk to you later. Prograph.com, an online resource for learning Cinema 4D, After Effects, and other motion graphics tools specifically catered to help you prevail as a motion graphic designer. What's up, bros? Welcome to another Prograph motion graphics tutorial. With tutorials, plugins, and now a podcast with tens of thousands of listeners worldwide. Yeah, it's a great community to be part of. We give you professional time-saving tips, industry news, interviews, shortcuts, and lessons that help keep you current in the world of motion design. Throw in HDR Studio, take the render settings, pick the HDR, put a reflection, and gorgeous. I love projects that scare me. When our art director comes to us and asks for something that I had never done before, man, it gets me pumped. Our weekly long-form podcast will give you the latest news, help you in your file management, hardware configuration, and client relations. Learn about the latest render engines, modeling techniques, and workflow integration while staying entertained. Real nice banana. <laughs> That's so funny, all right. I'm gonna live forever. <laughs> Our BroGraph talks are a chance to see the way industry leaders from around the globe are changing the face of motion design. Sometimes you gotta make stuff that you're not gonna put on your reel. I'm not here to judge. The podcasts and talks include people like People, Barton Damer, Nick Campbell, Andrew Kramer, David Ariev, Chad Ashley, Paul Babb, EJ Hasenfrost, Mitch Myers, Chris Schmidt, Jules Urbach, Cornelius Dammert, David Brodeur, Andy Needham, Caitlin Kaju, Zubair Parker, Noseman, Ryan Bean, Casey Hupke, Nick Lyons, Sage, Joey Corinman, Jeremy Cox, Rick Barrett, John Dickinson, Matthias Omatola, Patrick Gosky, Brandon Clements, Steve Teeple, Tom Glimpse, Patrick Longstrom, Julia Simone, Devin Coe, Al Heck, and even Dead Mouse. You get that render done. Yeah, you better frame frame what? Our BroGraph breakdowns go behind the projects and give you an insight on what it's like to manage and maintain your own personal business or work for a large company. Join us for live sessions, check out our useful plugins, watch time-lapse projects, interact with us, and send us email questions and topic ideas. Or just hit the rando render button and do an imaginative daily that'll keep you on your toes. Take all your dreams and let's do it! Subscribe today and get automatic updates on the latest tutorials, tricks, tips, and inspiration brought to you by industry professionals Dave Koss and Matt Milstead. We don't care how you get here, folks. Just get here. Subscribe now to BroGraph Tutorials. Pretty good, I guess.